All right, so I'm going to go ahead and actually take a look at this practice quiz. Now, I realize we took this a couple of days ago, but with the final exam coming up in three very short weeks, I want to make sure that you feel absolutely prepared, that when you want to look over your old notes, you have every possible resource available. So let's just remember displacement is your final position minus your initial position. That's delta x. And distance is the total length covered. And we're going to be using both those facts when we take a look at questions 1a through 1e. So the displacement between 0 and 55 seconds, well, at 55 seconds, we're here at 0. And at 0 seconds, we're at 0 as well. So 1a is a very disappointing problem. What we're going to find is that x final minus x initial is simply 0 minus 0, which is, well, we ended up going nowhere. Now, the distance traveled between 0 and 55 seconds, that's going to be a bit of a different number. So in part B, we're going from 0 to 60. So we're going a nice 60 meters. Then we travel 0 here. We go back from 60 to 0, so we cover another 60 meters. Um, we cover 40, going down to the negative 40 mark. And then we return it back to the 0 mark, traveling another 40 Meter. So when we add up all of this to get this distance, we're going to get 60 plus 60 plus 40 plus 40. And the result is that we cover a total of 200 meters. Now, the object's position at 20 seconds. This is one of those questions that is designed to trick you, not because it's hard, but precisely because it's easy. You've done two very challenging questions. And then for 1C, what's the object's position at 20 seconds? You go to 20 seconds on the graph. And you simply read the position here as the 40 meter mark. So that's how we're going to simply finish that one. Now the displacement from 10 to 40 seconds, um, there at 40 seconds we're at negative 40. And at 10 seconds we're at the 60 meter mark. So in order to get the displacement, that's going to be x final minus x initial. Don't even try to make stuff up or figure anything out. Simply read the sign of the number and write it down. So negative 40 minus the 60 up here. And so we're actually ending up at a negative 100 displacement. What does that mean? It means we were at 60 and we end up 100 meters backwards from that. And that's a question that came up a lot. People seemed puzzled that we could get a negative displacement. It's absolutely possible. And what it means is that if you were at, say, the 60 meter mark here, you wound up, here's the origin, and you wound up an, another 40 meters behind the mark right here. That's what happened. Now, what is the object's velocity from 0 to 10 seconds? Let's just remember the velocity is going to be the slope. Um, and I'm going to use physics notation, so v naught is going to be the rise, delta x, over the run, delta t. See how I'm mixing my language, but keeping it clearly physics. Um, so this coordinate here is 10 seconds, 60, meaning at 10 seconds I'm at the 60 meter mark. And I start from, at 0 seconds, I'm at 0 on the ruler. So this ends up being 60 minus 0 over 10 minus 0. And so my answer is 6. And the units are the units of the rise divided by the units of the run, meters per second. So that's question 1. Now for question 2, it says draw a quantitative velocity versus time graph. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to go ahead and actually follow the convention here. And so um, this is 10 seconds. This is 20 seconds, 30, 40, 50, and again, this is time in seconds. I'm simply following the rule that I see for the graph above. And let me just zoom out here a little bit. That's a little too small, I think, for my taste. That's a little bit more workable, just so I can label this graph. Now, I notice I've got about 6 meters per second here. I'm not really sure how this um, is going to work out. I'm going to count by twos and kind of hope that my idea is a good one. Um, so here, working with this number, 
we will simply say two, four, six, and eight. So two, four, six, eight. Um, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. And now I can zoom up a little bit just to get a bigger size. And this is velocity versus time. So this is going to be velocity in meters per second. Now for the first part, we've already calculated it out to 10 seconds. Our velocity is 6 meters per second. So I'm actually going to then draw a flat 6 meters per second there. From 10 to 15 seconds, I'm not moving at all. Um, I do like it when people draw that line at the zero mark there. So I do encourage you to do that, both on homeworks and on tests. Now let's get the slope from 15 seconds to 40. So from 15 to 40, That's going to be um, delta x over delta t. That's going to be negative 40 minus 60 all over, that's 40 minus 15. And I'm getting negative 4 meters per second there. So that slope from 15 seconds all the way to 40 seconds is negative 4. So I'll go all the way out to here and draw the line like that. If you want to draw little dots connecting these, that's fine. It's not required. And then, this is a terrible color. Sorry about that. And then um, for the last part, um, let's get the slope from 40 to 55 seconds. So that's going to be delta x over delta t. That's going to be 0 minus negative 40 over 55 minus 40. That's going to end up being 40 over 15, um, which ends up being 8 over 3, which is about 2.67 meters per second. Don't do the thing where you're like 2.6 repeating. That's not something we do in engineering physics. So we're at about 2.67. That's about right here. And we draw that line. Whoops, it's actually positive 2.6. So I go 2. Three's here, two's here, so about two thirds up like that. So 2.67 or 2.7. So that is how we draw the quantitative velocity versus time graph. I was actually a lot nicer on your um, problem. So that's page one of the practice quiz. We'll take a look at page two in the next video.